So by far one of the most popular videos that I've ever done would probably have to be my multi-track beat detective style drum slicing workflow in Studio One. But what I thought we would do in this video is uh, explore a different approach. So I've been pretty vocal about how I feel when it comes to quantizing things like drums and just my views on quantizing in general. That being said, I know that there are some people who would prefer not to have their audio all sliced up and they might want to use the bend markers and the algorithms that come in Studio One. So in this video, that's what we're going to take a look at. So I have the exact same drum session. I've used this a lot. A shout out to Andy Selway for making these tracks available um, to use in my demonstrations. But ba the basics of it is going to be the exact same thing. When we take a look at things like drum quantizing, regardless of what strength we want to quantize, if we want it to be 100% on the grid, 90%, 80%, um, it's really important to kind of take what is holding the groove and take like the main fundamental stuff like the kick and snare and then all the other stuff that kind of exists, unless you have tom fills that are really out and your hi-hat patterns and stuff like that, we're just going to kind of leave that be. So the actual concept is very simple. The way that I would approach this workflow, uh, if I was using uh, quantizing using bend markers versus slicing, is really no different. We have a set of drum tracks over here. We can listen to them really quickly. And if we put our click on... Okay, so just a couple tiny little flams, but these tracks are definitely not that bad. So what I would do is I would select my kick in track, for example, and my snare top. Now, why am I selecting kick in and snare top? Well, they're the cleanest sounding signals that I had. I might only have one kick drum mic and that might be a kick out mic and that's fine. Or you might only have a snare top and that would be fine as well. So once you have these, you're basically going to open up the bend marker view and then you're gonna do an analysis here so that you're making sure that you get all of the trigger points that you need. So I've just dialed this up. This is where I've already left it in the last video. Uh, in this case, you could see it went up to 66%. If I go too many, then I have too many triggers. So we'll leave that set to where it is. And then if we take a look at our snare top, this is the exact same thing. In this case, it's 80%. You just dial this up till you have everything that you need and not too many. Because ideally, you want to have the perfect amount of triggers. You want to have a transient detection point on each part. Now, from here, I think it's also important to mention that I don't create my group first. I actually wait to create my group until after I've done the transient detection on these individual tracks. Now, once I have that done, it's a matter of selecting all the drums. We'll create a group. We'll call this drums editing. We will click OK. Now, if we open up our bend audio bend menu over here, the sub menu, you can see over here we have these different drop down menus. In this case, we have the ability to choose the guides. Now, the guides are already set. But if they weren't set, it'd be very easy to just select the ones that we want. Also, I'll give you another tip. If any other time you're doing this, you see that everything is selected. If you hold down Alter Option and single click any one of these, it will deselect all of them. So kick in, snare top, those are my guides. Now that I have the guides selected for this group, notice that if I select any one of these audio events, everything gets selected. Also, let's go to the bend marker view for everything. Also notice that we have all of these audio events that are selected, but we only see the bend markers on the tracks that we detected. So this is what I want. Now from here, it's pretty simple. We are going to choose a time stretch algorithm, which in this case has already been chosen. Let's go over here and let me just pull this down. This is basically using the drums mode for all of them. We'll make sure I'm just toggling down and I'm looking for this. If I see anything other than drums, that's what I'm looking for. So we'll go through, okay, I don't see any of those, so that's fine. We'll bring that all the way back to the top. Now, once this is selected and you have your audio event selected, it's pretty much just making sure that your action, instead of slice, your action is set to quantize and the strength, we can leave this at 100% and we'll click apply. So now what happens with the drums is that you can see these green areas and these red areas. Now this is indicating either time compression or time expansion that's happened. Also, you're gonna see this little wheel spinning depending on how powerful your system is. It's going to cache brand new files that will be available to play back and you'll be able to hear the results. So now if we take a listen to this now, you can see that has stopped spinning. It's right on the click. And also we could visually kind of verify this by just kind of skipping through 
you can see all of these transient detection points, whether they're red or green, they're all residing right directly on a grid line. Now, here's another thing to take into account is if Studio One did something where you're not quite happy with where it landed, I can't really find any examples of that at the moment. Any one of these transient detection points, because this group is enabled, if we move one of these, they're going to be kind of like phase locked and they're going to move together. And let me just find an example. And also another thing to point out is if you have two that are very, very similar in, in terms of how tight they are together, that you had, for example, one on the kick drum and one on the snare, and they were happening at the exact same point, Studio One will use whichever one is closer to the grid line. That'll be the one that gets pulled in. But if I wanted to make any adjustments, like for example, take a look at this kick hit over here or this one over here. Notice that we have this little blue padding, which is the way that the transient bend marker detection works in Studio One. And we have this line over here, which is representing that the front end of this transient detail has been preserved. But then we have all the lines that line up over here. They're in line with the front of this padded area. So this is normal. It might be a little bit um, awkward if you're not used to what it is. But now, if I did want to make any changes, it's very easy for me to just hop over to the bend tool, for example. And now if I grab this detection point, let me just make sure my snapping is off. If I grab this detection point and I move it, notice they all move together. So I'm moving the whole entire performance relative to each other. So if there was some additional tweaking that you needed to do or that you wanted to do, maybe pull this back a little bit, you wanted to go through each one of these, or maybe you played back something and you didn't like what you heard, or maybe you don't like it at all. You could select all of them and you could delete that. And now there's no quantizing happening at all. So that is using audio bend versus slicing. Like I said, this isn't my preference, but for those of you who don't want to have all of your audio events cut up into individual slices with crossfades on them, uh, this is another alternative that we have. I'll switch back to my selector tool, select all of these here. We will deselect our bend marker view. And now we're looking at just contiguous consolidated audio files like we had at the very beginning. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you got something and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.